I'm joined here by Brian Cobb, who is Chief Innovation Officer of CVG International Airport and also, of course, a member of our advisory board. So, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be with you again, Holly. Um, so, firstly, what are you working on right now in your innovation department that you're particularly excited about? So it is all things autonomous, uh, including everything on the ground and actually the air. So there have been skeptics about really can the advanced air mobility be a thing. Uh, we truly believe it is. Uh, but right now we're focused on the ground, believing that the air will come very quickly. And uh, of course, automation and artificial intelligence has been a lot in discussion um, at this conference. And of course, all the airport leaders who are up on the stage, they're all claiming, you know, don't worry, it won't, it won't be replacing uh, the workforce within our airports. But, you know, there are some skeptics out there. Um, is this actually true? Um, I know there was one airport leader who said they had about uh, 1,400 uh, truck drivers on the airport campus. But in five years, they're looking to make the whole um, system driverless. So what is actually going to happen to these drivers? Will they actually be redeployed? Yeah, very, very fair. Um, and healthy skepticism absolutely should be a thing. Um, and we're, we're always very quick, at least in, in our ecosystem at CBG, to say, you know, let's, let's stop the buzzwords and let's absolutely go to practical testing. Uh, so in fairness, this goes back to really 2016, um, credit to our housekeeping staff that said, you know, look, we have quite a bit of activity raging at us. Uh, we just can't get to the floor as much as what we used to be able to do. So our quality is, is starting to suffer. What should we really, you know, what are our options? Um, robotics came up immediately back then even. Um, are you going to replace our jobs? That, that question quickly came up. And we started discussing it. Um, we mutually agreed, all right, let's, let's test. We brought it in, uh, we purchased a unit, and to be quite candid, it was a dismal failure. Um, now, uh, the, the staff hung in there with us, to their credit. At the end of that one year, that unit went away, and the staff uh, said, you know, look, we, we saw value in that really one year trial. Um, let's keep at it if we can find a unit that actually can do what it, it promised. And we did. And we ended up being the first uh, North American airport to deploy Avid Bots. Uh, have not looked back. It's been a tremendous success. And actually now the conversation that we had with the team that's here is it's a supplement to staff. That was the conversation change. So we need to start looking at supplementing staff. We know that there are staffing shortages. This was all pre-pandemic. Coming out of the pandemic, circumstances have changed dramatically, labor shortages. So now we need to start talking about really a dynamic shift in the workforce. How do we start changing jobs and upskilling labor and start talking about how does, like a role of a housekeeper, start changing into a technician like a robotic technician. But a lot of upskilling is going to be needed then. So will the airports be the one to provide this or will it be the robotics company? Yeah, so I, I think what we were talking about before is we can't particularly like an airport. And now that we have so many different robotic forms operating in and around our airport, what we found very quickly is we, we can't keep having a situation where we're calling the robotics company back in to support us on repairing or updating or what have you on that various piece of equipment. How do we self-sustain? So we, we've got to address it and really it's going to be either through our staff or like a contract tenant. So it really has to rely upon us. And frankly, that gets into cost feasibility. I think you and I talked about something as simple as mapping. Each one of those robotics companies, the very first comment that they threw at us is, you know, we have to map. And reasonably so. You don't want those robotic devices bumping into things. Um, safety first. So absolutely, uh, that needs to happen. However, that adds to the cost of the delivery of the unit. So we have to start driving towards standardization. And then on the back end, who maintains that equipment? Um, I understand what you're saying about in terms of your team and it will help supplement their skills. But um, in the case of the, this example that I use with the driverless cars, uh, the driverless uh, vehicles, 
Well, what would you say about that that example? Because yes, you will need someone to look after the fleet, but um, surely not as many as those original 1,400 drivers that you originally had. Yeah, dangerous proposition, I would say, to, to be that audacious to say, you know, it's going to replace everybody. Um, Let's flip the scenario a little bit differently. So we were the first airport in the world to have a fully autonomous baggage tug um, to be capable of delivering baggage and cargo to aircraft around operating aircraft and personnel on the air side. Now, the scenario that we propositioned to our tenant carriers is, do we get into a pooling situation, autonomous pooling situation where a fleet of autonomous vehicles are deployed where they're just what we would term milk runs, driving milk runs. And what does that imply? As opposed to a, an employee, an airline employee, um, driving a mundane baggage route and not really applying a skill set other than driving from point A to point B, dropping off bags, picking up bags, are they better served plain side or carousel side and sorting bags or loading bags on that aircraft and now doing more critical functions like load balancing and making sure baggage actually gets on that aircraft in a timely fashion. Or better yet, um, reallocating staff in front of the customer where it's more critically needed. Mm. So those are critical job functions as opposed to mm. mundane work. So you think that there is still a chance that they, they can be redeployed elsewhere um, just to make the work higher quality and less error? Totally. Uh, we, we have to figure out where there's more efficiency, more positive gains, and definitely um, higher effective quality use of our time and skill sets where it's needed most as opposed to really just mundane work mm. when we know for a fact, particularly coming out of the pandemic and the issues not going away, that there is a labor shortage. We mm. just have to address it. Absolutely, thank you so much for your comments on that. Um, so final question for you then, Brian, what is keeping you awake at night as the airport chief innovation officer? So um, pull that thread a little bit further. Actually, it's not necessarily the labor shortage, it's actually the cyber concerns related to that technology. Um, so airports have a target on their back. We really have to be sensitive to that fact. I, I know my colleagues are. Um, it's moving fast and furious. So we really have to be not only sensitive, but recognizing there are other outside industry players that can help us. Um, and it's becoming more of a prevalent theme in a good way that we're willing to go outside of our industry and learn from others. Um, so that, that's very much of a benefit. I think that's uh, key about um, innovation officers, like you are constantly looking outside the industry for inspiration. So which ones inspire you the most? Uh, inside, um, they're, you know, that's, that's not a fair statement, <laughs> putting, putting me on the spot. Um, Look, I'll, I'll put it this way, uh, because of our position um, and, and frankly because of our CEO and our board um, putting me and my team in this position and frankly elevating the CVG brand, uh, there is no lack of attention from other industries calling us and, and saying, hey, are you willing to partner or share information? So there are no lack of universities from around the world and other industries really just contacting us saying, are you willing to just share information? It's a, it's a tremendous honor. That's fantastic. Um, Brian, that was my final question. Thank you so much. Thanks, Holly. Great to be with you.